Hey, what's up? Arvin here. Welcome to Driven to Draw. Today's episode is going to be taking the line drawing that we created in a couple of other episodes previously on the Batmobile and then making a full-blown rendering out of it. So let's get started. Hey, what's up? Arvin here. Welcome to Driven to Draw, where I teach you how to be more creative and reduce your stress level through the very act of drawing and painting. Today, we're going to be talking about how we're going to take our line drawing and then create a full-blown rendering out of the Batmobile demonstration that I did a couple weeks ago. Bear in mind, this demonstration is going to be done using a free digital painting software called Krita. It's an excellent software to get you started with digital painting if you've never done digital painting before. But regardless, all the tips and the techniques that I'm going to describe here it can be used in any painting software. It doesn't matter whether it's Photoshop, Procreate, or whatever it is. I'm just going to be using basic brushes here in this demonstration. So if you like this kind of content, of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Now part of this demo is also going to be including just some exploration of form and how to create forms on the body of the vehicle on this Batmobile. So I don't really have a plan at the beginning. I'm not quite sure where I really want to take it, but I do know that as I start going through it, I might rethink some of the design elements in this study and then I might start changing certain things. But I think that's really going to be part of the fun and also part of the learning process. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to start off with doing this uh, quick rendering of the Batmobile. Now, you know, I've got <clears throat> I've done a couple of things here. And the last video you saw that we, you know, I created the line drawing. And right now what I want to do is to sort of flesh out the, the painting a little bit. But I want to do it so that we don't get into too much detail. And just to kind of uh, do your form exercises where you start to sculpt the form of the car. Okay, so the first step here is for me to pick a color. And I'm going to go with, uh, let's see, I've started new layer, paint layer 22. I'm going to stick that to multiply because I want it to be uh, transparent so I can pick up the line work underneath. Um, actually, you can do two things. You can do that or you can also put the line drawing on top, uh, the top layer, and then have the painting layer underneath it. So I'm going to now just start testing a few colors here of what I want this Batmobile color to look like. And I'm going to explore some digital painting brushes here. So you can see the ones I'm selecting here. When you look at this stuff, you've got, um, this is a basic two opacity. And then you've got basic one. And then you've got an airbrush here. So I'm gonna just try to stick with one of these two basic flow. Let's just see what these things look like. Okay. So I think this is a little bit too purplish for me. So I'm going to try this and I'm going to go with this base color that I've got. Um, okay. So this is good. And this is going to be my main paint layer. So the first thing I got to do is just block in everything that I've got. And I'm just going to go through the entire vehicle or the entire surface. And I'll avoid the areas where I'm going to have the exhaust area. Because we want to paint that one blue. We want to paint that a metallic color. We'll go with this for now. So I'm going to block this all in and I can increase the size of my brush by pressing the bracket keys. And then I'm going to worry about the other colors later because I don't know what I'm going to do. Now remember, this is just to do a quick exercise because what we're trying to understand and learn here is just how to, how to create forms. So when I started this off, you saw that I started with a Hot Wheels uh, toy car and what I'm going to do is that if you look at the drawing here and what I did in the last video and yeah, if you haven't seen the last video you can 
at the end of this video you'll be able to catch the the, the previous video I created and what I'm going to do is that I'm not gonna as I start to render this I'm not gonna go with the Hot Wheels I may want to change certain things about the design and just sort of create something uh, somewhat of my own so for instance I might decide to bring the windshield out more um, just change certain forms and shapes you know I did that here with the front of the car it's not the same okay all right so I've got this so this is pretty good all right so you can see here I've kind of blocked in the body okay so the body is now all done let's make sure I tighten this up a little bit and then for the for the windshield we're gonna go with like a reddish color here and go with a little dark red so I'm gonna block this in And you want to start with all these base colors because from there that's when we're going to start to use your darks and your lights to pop things out you'll get into highlights you'll get into areas where you want to show the uh, form changes and to show the form changes you want to show a, a difference between light and dark but this is good for now so I'm going to come back here and I'm going to take the windshield out to here. So this is a little different from what you see in the drawing, right? Because you can see the sections here. And that's a little bit different. And we can always come back and we'll correct it in the, uh, I'll correct it in the sketch or the line drawing itself. And we'll erase that one out. Okay. All right. So we have this for now. So this is good. And then I'm going to go back into my blacks or the darker areas and we'll just kind of put the value in through here. We'll block the wheels out. We'll show that symbol the bat symbol here as part of the the center hub I'm just gonna work my way around the spoke same thing here on this side Okay, so this looks fine for now. Okay. And as I go through this, I'm gonna go with a, maybe a, a, a grayish color here for my tires. And, you know, I'm just starting this off for now, but I might even change all this stuff as I start to render. In fact, when you see this thing completed, uh, once I get the backgrounds and the other colors, it's it's not gonna be, it won't be the same. Sometimes I don't even have an idea at all of, of what I'm going to do until I just start with it. I start with something and then what generally happens is I, I generate ideas as I'm going through it and then I'll may change my mind and that's all part of being creative. You don't have to stick with your an original idea of what you thought you wanted to do at the beginning. You can always change things along the way. So don't feel constrained that you have to stick to something. Uh, and it's digital, so you can experiment. Like who cares? Yeah, you can mess it up and it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go see if I can find my, okay, so here's my line drawing. 
So I'm gonna duplicate this layer. So I'm gonna go here. That's not the one I want. Go here. Copy of that layer and I'm gonna turn this one off so that I can go in here and then I can erase certain things here. So I'm gonna go and you can click the erase here. I got my pen so I, I, I press the button and I can change it. So here I'm going to modify what my windshield is going to be. I'm going to erase all this so I can redefine that section here. So just one word. So I'm going to go to one of my pencil tools. What's this one called? I think it's like a charcoal. Charcoal pencil, okay. And I really like Krita's charcoal pencils because they look really good. It really good, does a great job of simulating what pencil looks like. Okay, so that's pretty decent, maybe a little thicker. And then I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. All right, so if I were to look at this section, the section, if I were to come down, it would, it would um, if this were just to be a square piece, I would intersect this here this is going to chamfer down and this is what we had before, right? But I don't want that, right? So uh, same thing here, we drop a vertical down. We get this surface that joins here. And then this windshield right here is just going to track all the way around. And it's basically vertical. Now, now you can kind of see what this section is going to do with where I put the windshield, right? So now I've got this curve. I brought the windshield out to this location, right? Instead of going uh, straight vertically down, I'm pushing it out. So I'm going to do the same thing right here. I'm going to join this section. And this kind of wraps around, so you're not going to see it. And I'm going to join my line here. Or create that curvature all the way around, okay? This is all going to be hidden here because this is going to wrap around just like this wraps around, which means um, I got to go back to my paint layer. I got to pick. I hope that's right. Is that going to work? Maybe. Go pick my digital brush. Okay, so why is that not working? Actually, it should be a little lighter. Okay, so that's because when I go back to this layer, I'm going to erase this part because that's all pencil. So, okay. And I can come back and I can redefine that pencil again. Oops, go back to darker color. This is the only thing about digital painting. You gotta make sure you keep track of what you're doing with your layers because I don't know how many times where uh, I thought I was painting on a painting layer and I end up painting over the, the line drawing, which really sucks. <laughs> and once you find out and you've been working on it for hours, you're like, oh my God, it's on the wrong layer. And then there's like nothing you can do. And then you'll just sit there and go, oh, well, what, what can you do? Nothing, you can do nothing. All right, so I'm gonna go back now and take my digital paintbrush and I'm just going to play with maybe the color tones here a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to my paint layer. See, get it off of my eraser. And I'm going to go a little bit darker here and just see what that looks like. And 
the dark portion of it, I'll hit with what I would think would be, I don't know, we'll just kind of, you know, maybe he's got this little, you're looking at the hub or the uh, steering column, put some indication there what this thing looks like, I'm going to add that through here. As I'm humming through the uh, 1989 Keaton, such an awesome movie. If anyone has not seen 1989 Batman, it's so cool. It's so awesome. All right, so let's take a step back and see what we got. Okay, we've got this. This is fine. This is okay. I'm all right with it so far. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to start to sculpt on this. So I'm going to, let me take this layer and I'm going to move this above. See what that does. Okay. Now I got my layer now above, my line drawing above. And then what I'm going to do I'm going to create another layer. Now I've got my base colors now, right? I've got this darkish, you know, bluish, purplish, blue uh, tone that I have for the car, which is what's going to be the paint color of the car. And then from here, I'm going to start to add the darks to light. And, and that's all I'm really going to show on this, this particular tour, tutorial. It's just to kind of show you how you uh, form the shapes of the car. And kind of distinguish it from what we did before on the Hot Wheels car, what you saw on the Hot Wheels car. Um, so if you want to see that again, I mean, here we've got the Hot Wheels car, <laughs> so it's a little bit different. Um, anyway, I'll maybe I'll include a picture of it. Okay, so what I want to do is we're gonna I'm gonna use my color picker and pick somewhere close to what this. Um, what I think looks like, so, right? Got this. So I got my color here, and then we want to go with a lighter tone. So my light is going to come. So if I were to look at this, my light, just so you know, I'm doing this. Is the light is going to come in this direction here? Okay. So it's going to be hitting these spots. So I'm going to have these hot spots on the car where it's illuminated with um, these reflections or these um, uh, highlights uh, where it starts to identify the apex of the curvature. Okay. So if I'm coming in this direction, what is that going to do? And where are my darks and where are my lights going to be? So. We're going to start with a little bit lighter, so I might come in through here and I'm going to lighten up this area. And what it's doing here is that I'm defining uh, the shape of the shoulder on both of these uh, areas. All right, I'm trying to give this more of a muscular look because you want to have it really pronounced. At least I want to have it pronounced. I may now start to increase the brightness. Okay. And then we're going to come up through here and we're going to lighten this portion of the rear and then as it tracks along the body I'll end up highlighting a little bit of the edge the top edge of the shape on the side facing of the vehicle so as you take a step back so you can sort of see how the forms are taking shape a little bit, right? Uh, 
Okay, so the next part of it is going to be the top here. And notice also when I'm doing this, I, I don't press really hard, right? I start off a little bit softer with the feather touch. Because if you go real hard, then it might be too extreme and you don't want that, right? You don't want that. You always start with a very light pressure and then you increase the pressure so that you can understand the value distribution and where the light is touching, okay? All right, so now we've got that. Um, we'll start adding some other uh, more pronounced highlights and stuff as we get through this. All right, so now, uh, now we've got this shape here. What you're gonna notice is, um, I'm just gonna mark and I'll erase it here, but um, you see that we've got this section, right? Of the car that's doing this. It's coming up here to a peak and it's coming down and then back up again, right? So these sections are doing this. So how do we define, and now it starts to taper off, right? Because as you get up closer to the top, you don't have that angle. You're just gonna go straight across, and then you have a slight crown uh, to meet up with the adjoining surface, the adjoining shape, okay? So what you need to do here is that when you're looking at the light that's coming from this direction, I'm gonna get some of it that's catching, you're gonna have this big highlight that comes over here, I'm gonna track a little bit of the edge, then I'm gonna have a highlight here and then on the, on the shoulder, all right? And then here in this section, because you've got some light, you're still gonna catch this part of it right here. So you're gonna have some light that's touching here. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, uh, incidentally, because this is where the light is, is touching, going backwards is where it's gonna get darker. So I'm gonna to start to, to increase the value by making that other surface a little bit darker and then you get back to here and then you're going to touch the light uh, from here again right so again if the if the um actually the, yeah the light's coming through here you're going to be touching those areas so let's do that again I'm gonna erase or just whoops anyway so Gonna have to go back in and I'll just color that stuff back in. Apparently I didn't have enough undos. What the heck, man? What the heck? All right, <clears throat> so back to here. And all I wanna do, like I said, we wanna make sure that we're just reading the forms correctly. We wanna read this, so. Do this, it's gonna catch. Okay. Got that. I'm gonna go a little bit brighter here. Brighter here. So now this is reading pretty good, right? So let's take a step back. All right, so now you can read those forms pretty well. You know what's going on, right? You got some form definition action going on. Okay, so now we wanna go back to the darker part and when we wanna increase the value here. So I'm gonna go to this side this and then we're going to make these surfaces pop out so what's happening is that this is sort of crowning and depending on how extreme the crown is I'm gonna go back and forth you know between light and dark so I'm gonna use my color picker and I'll just kind of go and gradate back and forth to I see something that kind of matches where the section is right so as soon as the section goes down you're crowning down it's starting to go away from the light so I'm gonna reduce it. So all I wanna do is just read. I wanna be able to read this thing really well. Okay. 
I'm going to come back here. That's going to be darker. So let me do this. Go back darker here. And then back to light here. Okay, so that's good so far. All right. Now, now when it comes to this top section, I'm gonna increase the amount of light to have here. And then we're gonna go with a smooth curve through the side. there and then I'm gonna catch all these edges so so why do I do this here so when you look at me zoom into this area what this is capturing here is like this really thin radius that you may have on the surface if I have a sharp edge and I'm not gonna catch it um, but if I have a small little radius that light is going to catch the tip of that radius and it's going to track all the way through. So how do we do that? Is to add a really thin bead. So whatever the radius is uh, on that surface is basically what your tip size is going to be. So if you want a larger radius, I'm just going to add a larger tip size to increase the diameter of the brush. Now you're only going to catch it where the light hits. You don't want to do it all the way across. Otherwise it'll be like a, like a silhouette and it's not going to make any sense. So you have to kind of taper it off. You start here and taper it off. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go to the lighter side here, closer to the white. And I'm going to create this little bead. Now we'll go straight to white. Okay, that's good. Catch it here too. Remember, I just have to feather it out. Feather it out. Okay. And now, on the front of the surface, is what we we're talking about earlier. Just kind of decrease the intensity a little bit, and then we're going to add our highlights. And do this here. And I'm going to do this right here on that shoulder, which is where that height light's going to be hitting it. Now, sometimes there's a little cheating that goes along when I'm doing this. Sometimes. <laughs> You know, I add some lights and stuff where it doesn't really quite track. And that's just me using a little bit of artistic license here because it's not, uh, you're not going to get complete, I'm not completely accurate here with my placement, but I know what I want to emphasize on this. Dial that one back a little bit. Now the other thing as I'm doing this is you have another light bead. Make sure I 
get this one. Right. Oops, through here. Which is the inner radius. The inner radius of that wheel well. See how I taper that off. Oh, it's so nice. I taper it off. All right. And I'm gonna make this a little bit light, lighter. Make it a little bit brighter so we get our little hot spot here. So now, let's take a step back again. So now you can see how things are kind of forming a little bit, right? You know, everything has a good read to it. This is not going to catch as much of a highlight as the other sides, right? So it's just going to be capturing a little bit of light. And I might put a hot spot here. It could be thinner, you know? Doesn't have to be that thick. So, I mean, that hasn't taken too long. We spent about a half hour right now on it. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, let's um, see if we can give some treatment to the, uh, to the wheels here real quick. I'm going to go with the grayish color. Brighter here. Oops. Yeah, sometimes I like to use different textures too. You know, uh, this is like almost a little too smooth for my liking because I like a little bit of texture action going here, but um, that's okay. We're just going to keep on with this for now. Once we do this, now we got some gray, and I'm gonna just block in um, maybe a little darker gray here, and then you know I'm gonna come back in and I'll start to get the contrast I need to make it look a little bit more metallic here. Quick contrast with a little bit of white. Not white, but just a little off white.
Okay, I'm going to go with actual white here. So I want to see if I can pop this up a little bit more. You know what I need to do is the paint layer. I'm going to have to create another layer on top of this one, the line drawing. So, so lights come in this direction, right? So I want to catch these edges. Then um, we'll take a little highlight here, which is going to be a lighter blue. And then we'll just track this edge. Okay. All right, so that's getting to read pretty well. Um, so many things we can do here it doesn't have to be like this I'm gonna make some corrections here because here I want the shape to follow I need it to follow the wheel well I'm sorry the uh, the shoulder here so we're gonna do this so that it doesn't look too awkward Okay, I want to go to a little dark here. Let's make it sure that we're just separating now. You know, I'm making this up as I go. <laughs> I have no idea what this is, and <laughs> it's just some exhaust. I mean, we can, I can, you can always go back and refine stuff. You know, it doesn't have to be exact, but. What you do want to do is make sure that it makes sense, right? It should make sense. Whoops. Okay, so got this. Now the light is going to be touching. Whoops. I want to go to the blue here. Take this blue and then come back out to here. And then maybe this will just be brighter here. Yeah. That's fine. I'll take that. And this one will just get the cut line here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to emphasize the highlight here because on the layer so this is kind of what we do when you're doing with quash paints you know <laughs> all right so the wheel I don't care much for this wheel but uh, can I uh, it's looking terrible all right it's not working today you now when you don't do ellipses let me just blow this up and see if I can do it this way uh. Okay, I'll do with that. Getting some jagged edges here. But all right. <laughs> it's not the best of lips. You know why? Because I'm severely out of practice. 
bad excuse. All right, so I'm just gonna do this real quick. Just gonna do some quick outline stuff here and. Not exactly what I want to do here so what I'll end up doing is you know I'll put a lot more effort into this and we're now going on 40 minutes for just rendering this right and this is just more or less just quick ideas of what I want this thing to look like and and that's okay I mean it's enough for you to to kind of explore and to generate some ideas at the beginning and then from there you can start to to really add little design elements and things that you may want to change. So I'm going to stop right here again. It's about 40 minutes that we just finished this digital painting, just showing you how you do surfaces and, and create uh, just some form changes by shifting the values and, and accentuating the light in particular areas once you have your light source. Now, just so you're aware, you can go on and on with experimenting and just trying different kinds of forms and things like that then get into the background so what I ended up here with is my final rendering once I got all the uh, the wheel details and the tires and things in the background uh, I went with something a little extreme and, and really saturated in color with a very dark red background or a very intense red background and then I added that third fin or that center fin on the top of the uh, on the top of the car on the on the top of the roof line and I uh, just added some other little details here to, to kind of pop it out a little bit and just bring a little bit more of attention I got the headlamps in there so there's so many things that you can you can do when you start to digitally paint because you've got a lot of options to be able to just experiment and you know whether you make a mistake it really doesn't matter you just can erase it and start over and just try something else or you can look at different references and things that you see in other Batmobiles or any other kind of car design you can look at some of those elements and see how those surfaces are created or just see something that's very interesting about them from a design standpoint and try to implement some of those things on your own so I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you in the next demo on Driven to Draw have a good one